Hello everyone. We just got back from Geneva, Switzerland, attending the 2024 Cephalicon hosted by CERN. Awesome, awesome event, and we're gonna tell you all about it. And uh, no, I didn't get suckered at the event. I got a stick in the face at hockey, so let's move past that. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about the conference. All right, well, so there's a lot to cover here, so we'll hit the main highlights. Um, first of all, uh, the host, uh, CERN, um, their massive campus, beautiful, and like just like the heart of science itself. It was so like personally just like awe-inspiring to be there. I know a lot of other people felt the same way, so that was a bucket list moment for sure, just being there. Um, anyway, great host, Geneva, Switzerland, awesome place, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, but with that out of the way, the actual conference itself, like it was spread across a couple different auditoriums. There was about 350, I think, somewhere around there, attendees, way up from uh, previous in Amsterdam. So that was awesome to see. And, the, and the, the technical content of the talks were awesome. The developers have great insight. The users giving stuff back were great. A lot of the talks given by like users of Ceph and how they use it in their business were so interesting to hear. Such uh, varied usage. Uh, people from like Sony Entertainment to Bloomberg to Vulture to to um, uh, Proton, Proton Mail. Uh, really interesting talks. Love and hear how they solve all their issues. A couple of the more technical things that we really loved here f uh, from our point of view at 45 Drives was a couple things that popped out of like the Erasure Code plugins. Um, the default has been J Erasure forever, like for as long as I've used Ceph. And uh, what do you know about defaults? If it ain't broke, don't change them. So you always just use J Erasure. But that's been de deprecated for a little bit now. They don't actively work on it anymore. And there's another plugin called ISA-L or ISAL um, that works with Intel, AMD, and all the new modern instruction uh, instruction sets. And some of the benchmarks I saw in the in the um, presentation were amazing. Like we're talking like two, three hundred percent increase. Not like a measly, oh, it's about five percent better. Like really, really excited to see that. So anyone building the Ceph cluster, take a look at that. The J Erasure plugin is still default, but the ISA-L is present. We're really excited to learn some more about that. Um, the, there's a new crush rule algorithm that's out. This is massive because you usually don't get changes down in the crush level. Um, but there's a new one called crush multi-strep retry. And the whole point of that, um, without getting into the details, is it allows you to be a lot more flexible and, and instead of having like a massively wide cluster to do a large erasure code profile, you can kind of like tuck it in and do some magic and put two chunks on each host and then all of a sudden turn a six wide erasure code to work on like four hosts. It's really, really cool. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see more of that too. So. Big thanks to the developers for working that in there. And again, their main goal, which they highlighted multiple times that the goal of all this is to lower the total cost of ownership and ease of entry into Ceph. So if you want to uh, efficiently store a bunch of data and need to use a big erasure code profile, traditionally you'd have to use at least eight, 10 servers. But with work like this, it allows us to shrink it and then grow a cluster over time. So love, love seeing that. Um, and then the other big thing that came up that we loved is uh, just the general progress on the Crimson, Crimson OSD store. This will replace the blue store method of, um, of how Ceph organizes all its data on its storage media, whether it's a hard drive, SATA disk, or NVMe. Uh, Crimson's being worked on for a lot. Like I talked about it at our last recap after the Amsterdam one. Um, but uh, it's, it's going to be a really, really beneficial growth of the project where it essentially just re-architects how the whole data flow into the OSD um, works and we're excited. On top of that, uh, just meeting a lot of the members of the team there, in particular the, the lead dev on it, Metan, um, uh, we, uh, we, we met and talked a couple times and uh, we're going to share some resources and he was hoping that we could test out uh, his progress as we're going and make videos about it and everything and I'm going to get him on our podcast, he might not know that yet but you're coming. And uh, another big thing uh, that was presented in the Cephalicon um, that we, 45 Drives, are very graciously a part of is the governing board and what the kind of restructure of the governing board is and what the plans are to allow the project to grow and flourish beyond any 
one group person, one organization or anything, because we all believe Ceph should be here for a long time. It's powering a lot of the world as we know it. So we're diamond members on the Ceph Foundation Board, and that means we get to contribute with the steering and guidance of the project. We believe that we can, at 45 Drive, provide a good insight as we are both uh, software vendors and hardware vendors where we tightly integrate the two and provide that out. And that unique insight has got us to see we have deployed a lot of clusters, a lot of CephFS clusters. And after talking to a lot of people there, we are leaders in the amount of CephFS clusters out there. Maybe not always in the gigantic size of them, but the quantity for sure. So it, we want to give our insight there and, and that, that understanding of, um, I'm sorry, not understanding, the insight of what that means to sell to a bunch of uh, people who maybe think that they didn't need Seth or anything like that. And that's how we take a project like this just from the like, oh, it, it's, it, that, that's, pro, that's for the internet, that's for massive size things. No, it's for everyone. Which leads me into the next point. What the point of the board is we got, want to get more engagement in on everyone. We want everyone to join and help because a point of an open source program surviving, an open source project surviving, is contribution. It's commitments. It's committing things to it. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean code commits? Absolutely, it means code commits. But you don't need to just commit code. Not everyone can commit code. You can commit documentation help. You can help organize events. You can help uh, run the community and, and blog, tweet, everything about it. Evangelize the product by like being an integrator and selling it to people and making it easy and showing that an awesome tool like this is valuable for everyone. You can commit financially, you can commit your time. And that's what we want to engage. We want to engage in building a healthy community. And being on the foundation, we can help steer that because we believe if Ceph grows like that, it's better for everyone. What is it, the whole rising tide rises all boats? So that, that, that type of thinking. So we're really happy to be there. And um, you should go check out the presentation as well that was led by Matt Leonard, the chair of the board, and uh, on what our goals are uh, throughout the next year and onwards. So with all that said, the, the community is in a healthy space. Well, there's work to do, of course, as there is with any good project. Um, but yeah, the growth of the event, like there was a lot of people there. There was a lot of exciting people. There was a lot of new faces. Um, and speaking of new faces, um, there's a lot of new IBM development. Remember, a core of the Ceph development is coming from IBM right now after their acquiring of Red Hat a couple years ago. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be blunt here. Um, usually, when people saw people's IBM's name next to things, they shuddered a little bit because of past history. Uh, we said in our recap video last year that we think that IBM joining this and and dedicating their time and really buying into Ceph is really good for the community, and I stand by that. And I think it's really true. And I think they're proving that now on the work and the dedication that they're putting onto this. IBM has added seventy. Uh, increased the developers on the Ceph project by about 70%, I think the metric was. They're really committed, and a lot of the talks that I saw were things about using CephFS with Samba for Windows file sharing and stuff. Stuff we at 45 Drives really, really love and like to give out to our customers is too. So back to my other comment, rising tide rises all ships. The IBM joining and, and driving in behind ha has really been good for the Ceph project, so shout out to them. And I could go on and on, but I do think that those are the main high level points that I want to talk about there. And um, well, actually, you know, the last thing I'll end on is like, what's a good conference without a new conference shirt, right? To say that you were there, you got to you got to show off to everyone. So I do think that these are the best shirts that we've had yet. I uh, like the good, the Seth and the CERN logo, that nice. And then uh, the logo on the back is beautiful. And I might be incorrect here, but I'm pretty sure I'm not that the representative that gave the talk from Sony Entertainment, I think he was the one who, who supplied this design. So shout out to you, man, this is an awesome t-shirt. And I know some of my colleagues were a little jealous when they didn't get theirs when I came home and I said, well, you should have came with us. So that's our wrap up of the conference. Um, as always, I really encourage you, if anyone's interested in any of the topics that I just talked about or anything else that went on at the conference, please go check out the videos. They will be hosting those on um, Ceph's YouTube. And uh, anyway, we'll put links in the description below. And um, next year, uh, wherever the Cephalocon ends up being hosted, I know we 45 Drives will be there in a larger capacity. We're going to bring some more of our coworkers and catch the, hope to catch everyone there. And as always, yeah, uh, we, love, we love evangelizing and promoting Ceph in any way possible. Um, if you're interested in hardware, if you're interested in learning about a whole cluster install, if you just want to go through our Ceph bootcamp, reach out to us. We have a lot of Ceph knowledge. We have videos. We have everything. We just love to tell you guys about it. So 
check that stuff out. Thanks for watching the video and we'll catch you later.